Hey everyone, it's Dana. Welcome back to our sketch party. Um, thank you so much for last week's comments and help. And I, when I say I appreciate it, I really do appreciate it. Um, my name is Dana. I am a former Close to My Heart maker and now moved to Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. And I feel like it, I mean, it's such a big learning curve. And at the same time, like we had a company with similar products, scrapbooking, paper play, all that kind of good stuff. But um, there's just enough that's different to kind of keep you on your toes. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Um, I just love reading and kind of getting to know you um, through what you have to say. And it helps me, it really does help me. So please don't hesitate to um, comment on it and help me out. <laughs> help me out. I need all the help I can get. Um, some days are great. And there's so much about Stampin' Up! stuff that I am absolutely loving. Like really, truly. Um, I There's so much to choose from. Such a huge amount to, to kind of wade through. And um, again, some is different, some isn't. And I'm enjoying the journey 100%. So before I blather on too long, um, let's get to playing because I've got a really fun sketch and a really fun card to share with you. Okay, hang on. Okay, we are ready. This week's sketch was super simple. Um, a rectangle, right? Card base rectangle and a circle with a little spot for a sentiment. This is the first one that I made and I absolutely love it. One of the artists and designers um, had a sample up on social media and I saw it and was like, ah, I cannot, I just have to make this. I am all about, um, I love a good white on white card. I love the texture. I love the, the uh, lift that the thread gives it. Um, and then you've got this circle that at first glance, I was like, oh my gosh, it looks like water. It looks like grass and water and a dark sky. And I was like, oh, that's crazy good. So anyway, this was my first sample. And what we're going to do today is going to be a little bit different than that, but it's close. And I just want you to see, um, dream with me a little bit and see the possibilities of this idea. So um, we have a standard size white card base. Super easy, right? Four and a quarter, five and a half. We're going to fold it up, get it ready. And then we've got a three and a half by uh, four and three quarters piece of white cardstock. We're going to use that. Then we're going to use another little scrap to do some, some sort of a plant, right? Some foliage over there that adds some texture. And I, I know I have another piece over here I can use for that. And then we've got these cards. This is Thoughtful Journey, uh, six by six designer paper. A lot of you asked me to say the number and I forget, forgive me please, because I'm still getting used to all of this, but I know that the number's always by the barcode. So 163303 if you want these. They are absolutely spectacular. They're different than the ones we used last week in that these are more of a scene and you can use them. I think on the very first sketch party, I used these just because I wanted to try them out. Here, let me pull them out so you can actually just see a little bit. I know you're probably more familiar with them than I am, but I can't wait to use that one for winter. It has, doesn't this look like ice, uh, snowflakes, like when that ice just starts to crystallize on water? But look at these. They're just stunning, absolutely stunning. You can go on the... I believe it's the corporate page, and they actually did a cute little video about how they designed this, or maybe it was on Sarah's page. I'm not sure, honestly. If you ask me outside of this video, I can go find it for you and help you find it, but they actually should, they talked about how they came, how these came to be, right? How they designed it, which was such a fun little insight to all of that. Now, this first one, I wanna show you, oh, here it is, it's right in front of me. I want you to see where this was so that if you want to copy this one, you absolutely can. Because in all honesty, it looks completely different <laughs> when you take it out of context, right? So you can see where I used the die and cut that piece out. Because when I started to view it as water, this quickly became a lake, right? And then when you take it out, you're like, oh, there it is. There it is. Love, 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 love. And then I just picked, um, let me grab it for you so you can see. I've got it, the 
pretty peacock was the color that I did the words in because I assumed that, and I checked it a little bit, but I assumed that it was that dark, dark uh, turquoise, which is just gorgeous, right? Love that. But we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna do something a little bit different. Um, here is another one I wanna show you. This is from another uh, pieces that I've cut out that we're gonna, we're gonna mimic it a little bit. Um, but look, I want you to picture can you see it a little bit? See where that circle is, right? But how different it, it changes as you move it around the piece, whether it's, right? Seriously, you could make that look like grass and water, doesn't it? That's gorgeous, actually. Or if you wanted a little sun, you could actually put the sun up at the top so you have more yellow, and then you've got water at the bottom. Like, these are just stunning. Oh my gosh, I have so much fun playing with them and there's so many of them. So I don't feel guilty if I cut into them and then don't use it right away. Does that make sense? Like there are, um, close to my heart, we often didn't get a lot of paper. So when you cut into something, you're like, ah, like am I gonna, if I, if I use this, then I use it and I don't have it anymore. And there's some crafting fear in there for you. Um, okay, so I use Spotlight on Nature Dyes. Um, the medium-ish, I'm trying to see if I wrote it down, 2.75, two and three quarters circle um, diameter. You could make a different choice. You could make it a little bit bigger. You could do it a little bit smaller. The key for me was taking it off the edge, right? Um, adds visual interest. Um, someone actually had to point that out to me once because I am an in-the-box thinker. When I cut circles or squares or rectangles, it gets centered in the middle. I do this a lot. I have symmetry. That all makes sense to my brain. Taking something off the edge is like foreign nature. It, it really is. But that's an artistic brain. And I, I actually have to learn that stuff. It does not come natural. But I love it. Like I, I think that's part of how we look at an, a piece of art and we go, oh my gosh. Right? It just takes it to the next level. Those little teeny tiny details. So I just want to show you what I used. Oh, I didn't bring this set up. Oh, here, look at me, look at me go. I did bring it over here, so. Um, this is Stylish Shapes. It is an awesome set for these chevron sentiment pieces. I'm learning really quickly. Like this is the bomb and you have them in four different sizes, also squares, also circles with the little dotted edge. Absolutely love this set. Um, super, super cute for sentiments. It just adds a little style rather than just cutting a piece out that's plain. So, all right, let's, where should we start? So many things to do. Let's do the embossing first. This is my new jam. It is called So Swirly Embossing Folder. Now you'll notice big size, it's giant, which is brilliant because then you can do a bigger piece. You could 100% use this on a scrapbook page and you're gonna want to because it adds so much volume. And wait till you see it because I also think it adds movement. It's one of the few that is not um, a static piece. It actually looks like wind. So, oh, love it, love it, love it. Now it, fooled me because of the big size some of the other embossing folders are 3d embossing folders i'm learning i'm learning guys it's taken me a hot minute but i have to go back and look for the 3d because the first time i ran it i'm going to confess i ran it through with the wrong plates thinking it was assuming that it was a 3d folder and it wasn't so shame on me i'm learning it's it's just going to take a hot minute before i get there but um love the the size love the shape Use the uh, Stampin' Up! logo, it faces up, just like in Close to My Heart dies. We have the same roll. Um, I'm gonna take my, which piece? I think I did this one. Sandwich it in the middle. Um, you can see from the top, if you want that curve there, you can slide your paper around and, and make it work for you. But you can see kind of the pattern you're going to have. You can't imagine exactly what it looks like, but you can, you can see the pattern. Okay, so because this is a regular folder, it is uh, 133. Love the printed on there. My favorite thing in the world. All right, let's move our circle for a hot minute and our card and our piece so we can get the... We're going to do all the things together and try not to shake the camera to boot. All right, 
I love how smoothly this works. I have to say it over and over and over again because it really does make a difference. Pops a little, but they all do. Um, okay, so this is side. Sorry, I'm verbal. I talk all the time. I kind of verbally walk through things. Ah, oh, okay. Can you see it now? Can you imagine the, the wind gust that that produces? Like, it's just brilliant. Just brilliant. Okay, and I wanted to show you, is this the one I did? Where's the one that I, where's the one that I added? Here, there it is. I added Wink of Stella. We used to have um, Wink of Stella 2 in Close to My Heart. And then we developed our own, which we just called a clear shimmer brush. But it literally is the same. It's Wink of Stella. And I know you guys have that. I just wanted you to see the tiny bit of shine that that adds. Don't be afraid to add just to catch your eye, right? Nothing major, nothing huge, but just to catch your eye. Now we don't wanna glue that down yet because we're gonna cut our circle and then we're gonna um, cut off the back. It'll be easier to do it if we do it in that order. So let's imagine where we want our circle to be. Do we want it to just be grass and flowers? Do we want a little bit of sky? Do we want a lot of sky? Um, let me get you in a little closer and you can kind of see I think I love this touch of green here. I love the little tiny bit of plant. Like I am okay with that. I love that little bit of darker blue. I think that adds some really nice dimension. So I'm gonna go here, but you decide where you want yours to go. And let me get my two over here. One, two, three, the cutting one. And Okay, let me get this going. Actually, I can put it over here, so you might get to see a little bit. Um, sorry if I'm shaking the camera. Okay. Don't, oh, and it popped out. Love that, love that for me too. It pops out so easily. And now we've got our beautiful circle love him so much okay now we're gonna get this where we want it on the card right so I know I want that little bit of grass I want that upward movement I want it to be associated with grass so I want to keep that on there I don't want to lose too much of it but I do want a straight edge so I'm going to hold it on flip it over cut the back off right now I can glue it down. Uh, let's get the easiest thing for me right now is to just use a little bit of tape on the back. Honestly, you could use either side of this. It's just as pretty on the back as it is on the front. Let's see if I can find a new piece. I know most of the demonstrators use the green glue. Um, we never got, we never, again, another difference. Like we never got into the glue much. And again, I don't know why. I know that I don't like it on a scrapbook page because it can bubble the paper. But for small projects like this, I'm I'm 100% positive that it's economical, right? That it actually adds value because it's um, cheap and fast and easy to use, right? Oh, look at that side. I didn't even see that side. Okay. Do we want this side or this side? The dark turquoise. Hmm. I really kind of like that side though. Okay, but you tell me if you want the other side. Tell me all the things. I'm good. I am happy to oblige. Okay, again, just some uh, pop-up tape. You guys have foam strips, dimensionals. We have similar things. Okay, now I'm gonna line up that edge, maybe three quarters of an inch from the bottom. Okay, here's our circle. Let me get you in a little bit closer. All right, and then what I want is some foliage, right? Like this one has this round, oh, I love this one actually. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I just wanna show you where I, what I played with so you know. Yes, it's textured floral. 
and it's this one right here. There's several actually. There's some really good ferns in there. Just, ah, just love it. All the different greens that you can have. But I believe um, the one I'm gonna use, which is this one, came from Thoughtful Wishes dies. Again, another great set um, for foliage. There's single leaves, there's a flower, there's a cutout leaf set in here. Um, just love it. Love all the choices that we have now. Now I could emboss this with um, the piece that we did, or I can just use plain. It, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use plain and run it through. So we can just have a white. And I'm gonna show you the sentiment we're gonna use. Because uh, last week's video, remember, had this left over. I don't wanna not use it because it's too cute. I, I can't hardly stand it actually. And it came out of Friends for Life. We use the center, not the outline, but love him. We're gonna use, look at, ah, we're gonna use that. So let's get our foliage done. Move my stuff. I don't know if you're as messy as I am when you create, but oh my gosh, my, my space starts out somewhat clean. And then as soon as I start moving stuff around, like half of the things I lose on my table and I'm like, oh, it's right here. I know it is. It's right here, but it's right in front of me and I still can't find it. <laughs> Story of my life. Okay. We've got our, our piece. Now it's in here. I want to try the new mat. I want to try the um, take your pick dye brush tip and the little brushy thing and this super soft foamy mat. Let's just try it. And if it doesn't work, it's all good. Like we've got a pokey tool, I can get out of there. But I thought let's let's give it a go because I just want to see if it if it actually will come out or not. I tried it once on a smaller die. Let me see if I can get it. Those little bristles in there. It's kind of like a solidy one. Maybe not. Um, and again, if you have tips for me on this, like I, I feel a little bit like the blind leading the blind, although I'm sure my youngest would tell me to go watch a YouTube video, you know, cause that's how the world works today is you watch a YouTube video and then you learn things. I'm, I'm getting there, but in fact, I already have one of these cut out. I don't even have to do this one, but I love it so much. Okay. Let's move a little matty thing and bring our card over here now we've got our friend look at this you guys white on white on white i'm killing it today now i'm gonna use um this new little glue new to me little glue um it just says fine tip glue pen love this bad boy oh my goodness i didn't know what i didn't know like it's got this super crazy fine pin tip in it and, and it stays, it works. We had something similar, I'll say similar. Um, we had something similar, but it didn't stay unclogged. Like it got clogged every time you went to use it, you're like, oh. So I finally stopped, we sold the, um, the tip separate from the glue. And I finally was like, I'm out, I'm out. I don't, I won't sell things I don't believe in. And that was just too hard, right? People say, my thing's clogged again. You're like, yeah, I know. I can't fix it for you. Can't make that work. But this one actually seems to work. It stays unclogged. Who knew? Literally, who knew? Anyway, super geek. Sorry. Sorry if you can tell. I'm a little excited when things work. Oh, me. Now, I think... What I want to do, what my brain tells me is that I want a little bit of dimension on that word and I know how hard that's gonna be. I'm gonna cut the tiniest strip, two baby strips of foam adhesive. I know that there are other ways to do this, I promise you, um, but I didn't think of that before I did the video. So right now I'm improvising. <laughs> oh my goodness. I thank you for watching me because some days I'm just a hot mess. All right, now we've got our teeny, teeny bit of foam dimensionals on there. Let's see if I can get the backing off. Then we'd be good. Okay, and we're gonna flip it around. And I love 
this so much. Actually, I kind of want this to be, yeah, I want it to show a little bit more purple. So I'm going to bend that just the tiniest bit. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to actually cut it. I want a little bit more blue there so you can see it. Ah, okay. Now, the piece that's left, oh, no, no, we got to do this. So the only way I know how to do this, because my I have a tiny bit of a, a shake, my hands, um, either too much caffeine or a little bit of thyroid, and it, it just shakes sometimes. So the only way I know how to do this is to brace it against my other finger and then put the tip in and hope for the best. <laughs> But so far, so good. Like, it's it's pretty darn easy. Okay, now we have this Baker's Twine in the colors. It's it's almost, it's not a stiff twine. It's almost like a thick thread, to be honest. And look at this fun bow. Look at me go. I'm not really a good bow tire, but I'll show you what I learned. And this is going to be hysterical on camera, you guys. So if I can pull this off, like, we're golden. Okay, so it's three fingers, and it's the it's the technique where they go under two, right? No, no, under, over, under, over, under, <laughs> over. Okay, three times, and then I'm gonna leave a longer tail this time because I had a, I struggled making that one because I cut it too short. So then you hold your fingers up, and you go around and you tuck it, and the second time you go around. It's like tying anything you've ever tied in your whole life. You just tuck it through and then pull. Oh, <gasps> on camera even, look at me go. Okay, so then you've got this and then you gotta take it off your fingers. But look at the nice bow it makes. Seriously, I feel so professional right now. No joke, look at that. Oh, okay. So I know I need the snips for this because our scissors from Close to My Hair, most of the scissors I own are close to my heart, non-sticks. So they're awesome for sticky, gluey things. They are really bad at ribbon or thread because of that non-stick thing. So I really do need the snips. They work brilliantly. And then all I have left, and of course I did not get my glue dots out. What is wrong with me? I'm gonna do the same thing I did for the other one. I'm just gonna cut a teeny tiny bit of um, what Stampin' Up! calls dimensionals. And I'm gonna put that on the back. And then I'm gonna try to get the backing off. A little bit of a comedy show tonight. You never know what you're gonna get. But oh wow, that ribbon looks good. My thread looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna put it up a little bit so that it actually is up here at the top. But look at that, you guys. Isn't that so cool? Like, I love them. I actually love them both. I love them both. I hope you do too. And I will see you again soon. Bye.